What's up guys, today's video is on the top 5 best gaming keyboard in 2024. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options that'll meet the need of different types of buyers. So whether it's price performance or its particular use. We've got you covered for more information on the product, I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices like the video comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Number five, Wooting 2 He Ice, the best analog gaming keyboard. The new Asus ARG Strix Scope iKai 96 Wireless is simply the best gaming keyboard I've used in a very, very long time. I've been a fan of Wooting's keyboards for quite some time now. Prior to this review, I'd looked at both of its previous first-rate keyboards, the Wooting 1 and Wooting 2, and loved what I saw. That makes today's new arrival even more exciting, as the Wooting 2 Hay, the company's latest and greatest, should already have the makings of a fantastic mechanical keyboard, but also has to live up to my absurdly high expectations. Thankfully, it absolutely does. If you look no further than the black faceplate and keycaps of the Wooting 2 Hay, you might wonder what the fuss is about. I don't blame you. The Wooting looks decent, but it doesn't appear too different from the mechanical gaming keyboards we've learned. In fact, it's a little more boring than most in appearance, with some nowadays taking extra to a whole new level. You need to press a key, say the WAW, Kai Trans a key, rather than send a simple off signal to your PC, the keyboard will measure the full range of that key's motion. That means you could alter your range of movement between walking and running in a game without the use of a controller, or even have some semblance of control in a driving game without an analog stick or wheel. That's great for games like GTA V, where you're often switching between running around, driving, and even flying. That's a concept we've started to see from bigger brands. Though as far as I'm concerned, it was Wooting that initially brought this concept to bear with a usable and affordable product in the Wooting one. The Wooting 2, he differs from the Wooting 1 and Wooting 2 in how it measures analog input. However, where the older Wooting boards relied on optical flare tech switches, the newer he board uses the Lecker switch, made by Wooting with popular switch maker Gatoran, and relies on the Hall effect, hence Wooting 2, he to achieve analog input. The Hall effect relies on the power of magnets. There's a magnet within the stem of every Lecker switch, and by measuring the magnetic force of that magnet as it moves, through a Hall Effect sensor on the keyboard's PCB. The Wooting 2, he is able to accurately track the full depression and return of the mechanical switch. Wooting generally does a great job of living up to expectations, though the keyboard is solid, well-built, and comes with a two-year warranty. If a switch breaks, you can swap it out, as the board is hot swappable. That's one benefit of there, not really being all that many mechanical moving parts with a magnetic lacquer switch, and another is that there's less to break in the first place. That's what I've loved about every Wooting keyboard I've looked at so far, and no more so than the Wooting 2 Hey, They're not built on a great concept, they deliver it. Even if you think you're sold on the analog movement of the Wooten, and it can be limited in scope depending on your preferred games and genres, there are many other great reasons to love it beyond that. Number four, Logitech's 915 Lightspeed. The best wireless gaming keyboard, the Logitech 915 TKL gaming keyboard is a familiar sight for yours truly. I've been using the Logitech 915 for my past 50,000 words or so, and the 915 TKL brings the same wireless technology and sleek design to the fore, bar numpod. With only minor design tweaks and discounts, much of what I think about the 915 also stands for its miniaturized sibling. Two, this should be easy then. Obviously, the biggest shakeup with the 915 TKL is the lack of numpad and macro keys. The TKL comes in at just 368, ITM to the full-size G915's 475 DEM, leaving a bounty of desk space for you to chuck around your mouse. If you're anything like me, that might mean coming to terms with a lack of alt codes, but it's an easy switch for gaming alone. Macro functionality has been loosely retained with the 915 TKL, but has been shifted to a secondary program of the function keys. This can be flipped via the Logitech D aiming software to prioritize macro functionality first, in which case the fin key will revert phone 12 back to the original input. While the USB receiver remains the same tiny device as ever, one of the few changes introduced with the TKL is a small USB storage slot on the underside, built to accommodate the dongle when not in use. Potentially handy for a wireless device as small as the G915 TACL that might actually be carried between places often. You really don't want to lose that tiny dongle, either. You'd never find it. Even though you'll want to stick with light speed for the most part, thus ensuring the most stable connection. Wireless can also be delivered via Bluetooth and is swiftly accessible at the press of a button. 
The 40-hour battery life with RGB per key lighting enabled a little up from the full-size 9515 due to the lack of RGB LEDs, keeps Logie's wireless tech in the good books too. That's actually a 135-day battery life without lighting enabled, but who's counting? Number three, Mountain Everest 60, the best compact gaming keyboard. I don't like 60 keyboards. That's the sort of admission so early in a review of a new 60 keyboard that might have you questioning my suitability for said review. Plus, I'm aware you will have already seen the high score, the award badge, and may now be finding this whole opening spell somewhat ludicrous. But while every other 60 keyboard I've ever used has been admittedly adorable, they've been utterly unsuitable for actual day-to-day -day use. The Mount number 60, however, is just as equal as the competition, just as cute, and has all the enthusiast keyboard extras you could want, but crucially has the total utility to be your daily driver of a key. Mountain isn't the first to create modular keyboards. Asus even made its own years back, but it's the first to get it right, offering a solid, secure fit for the modular components, as well as multiple mounting options. Makes the whole setup actually useful and not just some marketing gimmick. On its own though, the Everest 60 isn't modular, but there is a dedicated numpad that can be purchased separately and it's hot swappable. Crucially, for me, it will also attach to either side of the board. If you're still rocking a numpad on the right-hand side of your gaming keyboard, then you're just plain doing it wrong. The key benefit of a smaller key is that your mouse and touching hands are closer together and switching the numpad to the left means you still get to use the extra buttons and the extra desktop real estate for your gaming rodent. The tiny right shift key does take some getting used to, but the addition of the cursor keys makes a huge difference to the overall utility of the Everest 60. But that's not the only reason I've fallen in love with the board. However, this thing just oozes quality. It's easily the best typing experience I've ever had and is a real joy to use. The base of the keyboard has a layer of silicone inside it to add weight and dampen the sound, but then there are also two layers of foam on either side of the PCB to again improve the oral experience. Mountain has used genuine cherry stabilizers on the board too, but has made sure they're fitted and lubbed properly for the Everest 60 to ensure there's no rattle on even the broad spacebar. And I'm impressed with the Mountain Mechanical Keyboard, switches the company is shipping inside the Everest 60 for the first time. Mountain is also selling them separately, in tactile 55 denoting the 55 C can force needed for actuation linear 45 and linear 45 speed, which have a shorter travel and actuation point. I've been using the Tactile 55 in my sample and they feel great, really stable, responsive, and factory lived, so there's none of the grittiness you can sometimes get from a Tactile switch. The Everest 60 package isn't completely perfect, however. The main thing that lets it down is, as always seems to be the case with peripherals, the software. It's mostly fine, mostly, but there are quirks and the odd little bug I've experienced both in early review testing of the Everest 60 and in my time using the Basecamp software day-to-day -day with the Everest Max. All this good keep stuff does come at a price. However, the Everest 60 is $140, $110 on its own, while the hot swappable numpad is $50 PS35, making the whole package a lot. There are some bundles packaging the two together and ones that include the colorful new PBT cap range, which can make it a bit cheaper but not by much. I guess that's enthusiast keyboards right now. And honestly, there is a feeling of quality to the design and manufacturing of every part of this package. The base, the switches, the numpod, the connections, the keycaps, that makes the pricing almost understandable. Number two, GI Skill Cam 25 RGB, the best cheap gaming keyboard. Mechanical gaming keyboards can cost a fortune. The GA Skill Cam 2 and Ridden 50 RGB's best skill is that it doesn't. In fact, it's nowhere close to costing a fortune, yet it still offers mechanical switches per key RGB, hot swappable keys, and discrete media controls. Which is why the Geo Skill Cam 250 has my attention, because it is bringing a host of those enthusiast keyboard features without the exorbitant price tag. Right now, you can pick up this compact 65 keyboard for just $40. If you're after a good compact board, you honestly don't need more. And if you're looking to get into the enthusiast switch game, it's a super cheap base to jam some quality switches into because it's entirely hot swappable. I will say up front that it is obviously lacking the high-end luxury of sound dampening and super fancy stabilizers. But those are compromises I'm willing to make for such a supremely cheap keyboard. And honestly, I've experienced far worse stabilizers on expensive N6T and Razer keyboards in the past. Unlike the KM360, however, the KM250 isn't shipping with genuine Cherry MX switches. Instead, it's using Chaos version of those linear red switches. They're not bad, but definitely not great. 
and combined with the plastic undampened chassis, you do end up with quite a hollow sounding typing experience. But having changed out the linear kale red switches for a set of Halo True Heavy tactile switches, the difference in the sound is clear. It's not the ultra rich sounding experience of using the Mountain Everest 60 or Asus ROG Azoth, but it now feels great to type on, dampening or no. It's also at most half the price if you include fancy new switches, and if you've got a headset on, you'd be hard pressed to feel the difference. The board layout itself is pretty standard 65 fair, by which I mean it's my actual favorite gaming keyboard layout. I prefer a compact board. It gives me more space on my desktop and more space for my gaming mouse too. But a pure strain 60 means too few keys, and I really need to at least have cursor. GI Skill has ensured there's a little bit of spacing between the bulk of the keys and the cursors, and you also get separate Dell pickup and PG DIN buttons too, and a discrete volume wheel. I love a physical tactile volume control, and it's a genuinely lovely little extra I wouldn't have expected on such an affordable board. It's not just volume up and down, as there's a click down to it, which will mute or unmute your machine as well. I'm honestly genuinely impressed with the package as a whole, and if you want a proper mechanical keyboard experience without paying enthusiast money, the GI is Skill Cam 250 is an outstanding option. Number one, Asus ROG Strix Scope i96 Wireless. The best gaming keyboard, the new Asus ROG Strix Scope EE96 Wireless is simply the best gaming keyboard I've used in a very, very long time. There are faster, smarter, much cheaper boards that still deliver plenty of features. You'll find all of those recommendations below, but the best all-round gaming keyboard has to be the Scope i996 Wireless. That's in part thanks to Lub switches. Yes, lube switches. I'm so glad this has made the leap from enthusiast boards into more mainstream ones. The process of pulling out every key switch and dropping in some lube in order to make it thwump good is not something many PC gamers will have bothered to do. But freshly lub switches out of the factory means you don't have to worry about the messy details with the Scope i96. A spot of lube makes all the difference. Every key drops lightly into place as you type and smoothly springs back with a satisfyingly light clack. The ROG NX Snow switches are your pretty usual linear key switch with an actuation force of 45G. There's also the tactile and moderately heavier option. However, the NX Storm. Both actuate at 1.8 TM, which is pretty snappy, though not quite as snappy as those aforementioned boards at their lowest adjustable actuations. Not that I noticed that in-game. The Scope ID96 feels extremely responsive. It's also relatively quiet. The sound of the linear switch is reduced to a light pitter-patter by the sound dampening foam, sturdy PBT plastic keycaps, and switch pads. Lubed up, sturdy stabilizers also keep the larger keys, namely the spacebar, quiet you are able to swap out any of the NX Snow switches on this keyboard for keys of your choosing. However, if you don't replace them with lubed switches, I will personally hunt you down. Don't do the Scope II dirty like that. The Scope I-96 is nearly a full-size board. It importantly retains a full numpod, though it's been squished down into a more compact chassis. As a result, the delete key is further away from your pinky than normal, it takes some getting used to, but I've been tapping away on it for a couple of weeks now, and I feel I've got typing on the scope. I-96 down to a fine art. Still, it's been a long time since I've been blown away by a new gaming keyboard. So many seemed carbon copies of what Corsair did 10 years ago, but the scope I-96 has done just that. It focuses on nailing the actual mechanics of a mechanical gaming keyboard, and that appeals to the Mech keyboard snob in me. Importantly, it's also great for gaming and doesn't cost anywhere near as much as its smaller, more premium sibling, the Ragazuth. So this was today's video about top five best gaming keyboard. If you benefit from the video, then subscribe and stay with us.